Heights Budget and Finance Committee meeting. Um, we're here tonight to to discuss um, the preliminary budget for the 2013-2014 school year. Um, we recently had, uh, received uh, data from OPI giving us um, budget numbers to work with for the next school year. Um, you will see on a sheet um, right here, this is this is the budget data sheet from a guy that uh, Mrs. Morgan has worked with to uh, get some of the information that we will need for the next school year. Uh, bottom line, so that you're aware, um, we are sitting in, on page two, you will We'll go down on page two, and it says fiscal year 2014 budget limits, and it says highest budget without a vote, five million two hundred ninety-eight thousand nine hundred thirty-eight. That is the amount of money that we have for the next school year. Um, so I just want you to to know that. Um, that is the budget number that both guys came up with for us, um, the number of which we have to work for. Um, with that, uh, we've been working on taking a look at some of our actuals. Uh, we're hoping by this point to have our Black Mountain software uh, situated where we could actually print off some uh, actual numbers for tonight's meeting. But there are some problems that, I, that I've seen in it that we have to look at some of uh, the journal voucher codings from last year to make sure that they're in the correct spots because um, it, doesn't, it doesn't give you real actuals of last year. And so they'd be numbers that would just be sitting out there and giving us a false impression as to how each line had balanced out last year versus where we're at this year. Um, I will say this, as you're aware, um, the function codes for each part of the budget is the important part. The rest of the um, line items within the function code are primarily our best estimations. Uh, for example, when we talk about snow plowing, we estimate what our expenses are going to be for snow plowing. Some years we're going to spend more than what we actually have budgeted for because we may have a severe snow year. In other years, we may not spend the amount that we have budgeted for. And so the entire function in that part of your budget covers the expenses of, of when a budget line item budget goes over or when a line item is, is sold. Um, so I just want that to, to be noted. As you go through and take a look at the Excel spreadsheet numbers, you're going to notice on the far right-hand side the differences. These differences will tell you whether the line item has increased or decreased over previous year. And so you're basically taking uh, line A minus B to get that number. And you'll see that there are some, you know, some significant changes on this front page. But um, I'll, I'll plan to address that so that we understand how this instructional block of the function of the budget, um, you know, is having some decreases to it and why those decreases exist and will be part of our discussion here as we move forward to make a recommendation to the board. Um, as you want to dig through and find detail as to how each of these lines are constructed. You will see, for example, under education line item 112, professional educational, you see two million, at least a two million six hundred thousand dollar budget. If you go into your detailed budget, you will see the salaries and all the employees that make up the salaries that build into um, that number. And so the detailed budget gives you all the employees that we plug in, where they are currently sitting on the salary scale, and you know, some things. 
one of the uh, liabilities that exists right now, which we're still trying to track down, is uh, movement on salary scale. There are some teachers that um, have placed in letters that they will be moving on scale for their contract. And so that is one thing we do not have budgeted yet. And we're going to still need to work on so that number and that line item could change. Um, so we're currently waiting to see all the letters received by the end of the school year as to who is expected to move due to educational attainment, whether they go from an EA uh, 15 to a master's or whatever it is that they're asking to move on the scale for. Um, any questions? Yes. Uh, the audience does not participate. Why not? This is an open meeting. No, it's, it's, it's a it's, committee meeting. We do not take public comment during the committee meetings. This is a, it was put online. It's, it's a, you're available to participate by observing our committee meetings. Participate. Not, Montana and David Lowe's say that I can speak. Well, we Actually, we're not, we're not going to take public comment. And we're not going to take it's questions not public from comment. Comments. We're not going to take questions from the audience Why during is that? committee meetings. The committee needs to come function and do its work, and so we're going to do our work. You guys are unbelievable. So I did start the new guy. I just want to make sure that, um, so as a board, the committee meetings are closed to public comment. Yeah, yes. typically how it works is that the committee meetings, we come in and we do our work, and we allow the public to come in and observe the work of our committee. There are, there are more than welcome to come in and observe how the committee is functioning. That's and all committee meetings? Yes. Um, and we're... So like when we have... We're a meeting, that's, that, that's according to code and aid and all that. It's all on, covered under that code. Really? So like under negotiations, when we have... Well, I mean, it's not being out of gas. That question of the first word. Um, is that... I just saw a new guy. I just want to make sure that... You know, I'm here to represent the public and everything too, and not just want to know why we're making the decision this way. You know, it's actually it is my understanding from UTSBA that we can do our committee work without interruption by the public, so that we can conduct our business. Well, it's not interruption. You're saying that they cannot they cannot participate in a public meeting. Is what we're saying. No, you're just saying they can't comment. They can participate by observing. They're available to come in and watch. The they cannot come or have not question. have comment okay. so that we can conduct our business. And that's under public meeting laws and we're, us as a board, we're that's why covered I under all those laws. That's what you're telling me. Okay. Which floor is that, by the way? So, moving on. Um, as, as we are doing our work here, um, just so that you have it. Are there any questions at this point? Uh, real quick on all the the previous years, these are actual historic, are these actual accurate numbers on the previous years, B, C, and D, or are they are these, are those, you're saying they're those historical? Were the projected, those were the projected historical numbers. Projected those historical, what's there, so they're not actual, how those, those years were the numbers we used for those years. But they're not the ones we ended with. No, they're not the actuals in terms of year how end. the number ended. Do I have access? Do I have those? Can I get those? Like I stated it earlier, we are working to get those. And that's because the Black Mountain doesn't, our Black Mountain software doesn't have them? Well, they do have them, but as I reviewed one of the actuals that reports that we had, there were some journal voucher entries that were in an area that I didn't believe they belonged in, so we're trying to correct that to make sure that the numbers that you receive are reflect actual, the actuals of how the budget operated. All the way back for the previous three, all the way back to 2010? Yeah, right, the three, I'm um, well, seeing two, 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 12, 13, 11. Okay, so you're working on those and all, we'll have those when? I'm hopeful in the next week or two. By the next meeting or whatever. The By next the next meeting. committee meeting that we have. Okay, yes. thanks. So this historical is the budget number that we were working yes. with. That's yeah. I understand. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.
Okay. So, just so you can understand how these numbers come to light on this Excel spreadsheet, we go up. You can go into the detailed budget and start working through it. Now, I don't know how the individuals on this committee want to work through this. If you feel comfortable taking this information and perusing it yourself, or whether you'd like to go through it in any detail tonight, we can dig through different parts of it to, to see exactly what's happening. But I will say this, um, in this budget, we currently have placed money aside for negotiations with the classified contract. So we, are, we have negotiations coming up where there is money built into this budget to negotiate with the classified unit. Also, what you will find is that we have also built into this budget um, and funded for another operating position. Because by the state accreditation standards, we are required to have another librarian on property. Um, so we have agreed to go ahead and hire a librarian for next year. So we're in the process of collecting applications for that. We are also in the process of collecting applications for a fifth grade teacher who is retired. That is built into this budget. And we also um, are looking at an additional teacher at the fourth grade level where um, you know we have a request by parents and teachers to address a concern for the number of students in an area and um, adding additional resources to that grade level. We've also, I've been asked by the chairman of the board to look at um, the SRO program. So we also have the SRO built in to this budget. So those are things that um, we have built into this budget and we can talk about where those are at. Now I will say some of the supply line items that we talk about, you know, we take a look at some of the supply dollars off to the side. We have scaled those back to 2011, 2012 um, numbers. They don't have to stay there. If we decide to not do an SRO, money can be shifted out of the SRO into and put back into supply dollars. If we decide not to um, do an extra teacher at the fifth grade level this next year, we can scale that money back into the supply dollars that we're talking about. So, these are things that we have looked at and things we are discussing. Um, from that, we can go down through here and we can talk about some of the things that, why there are significant changes. Sorry, can I have one back before you pass that subject? Um, you said you placed money aside for the classified library. Where, where's that under our, under our budget? What, it's, what category got that on your tape? So, For example, if you go to line item um, 201-160-1117, which is about the third line item down in teacher aids, there, um, if you look in the detailed budget that you're given, okay. you will see their salaries. Those salaries are built off of a rate increase, okay. percentage increase, and not built off of the actual where they're standing right now. So, as we go through all classified employees who end up in here or part of the classified agreement, they already have their numbers built in. Um, so that's how that under teachers eight and one one seven. That's a, that's a classified employee there. Or if you get under custodians, which is under operation and maintenance part of the budget. The classified people are all over the budget, basically. There's not one line item for them like there is for teachers. They're under their own little departments. So some are playground aides, some are special education aides, okay. some are custodians. So, moving along. As we go down, you'll see that 
on 1,170 vacation leave. We have historically budgeted about $20,000 in that area. What we we look at there is it's a it's a funded liability. We have a liability that exists that we could have uh, people who leave and we have pay out of their vacation leave. We have not had uh, for the past several years anybody cashing out in that, so we felt like we could scale that back by about 50 percent, and that's what we did in this budget. As we go down through and get to health insurance, you'll see that there is a significant savings there. We have realized that there's about eight employees historically who have not been taking health insurance, so we're not funding that liability there. So that shows up as a savings within the budget. Now, you may ask, why would we do this? Well, you might see that when we fund those liabilities at 100%, we end up with a lot of end-of-the-year monies. And so we've ended up with very strong end-of-the-year monies the past few years because we don't have the liability of those individuals retiring who are asking for the cash out of their vacation leave or uh, those individuals asking to take advantage of the health insurance plan that the students have had. So those are things where we just feel like um, we can scale back in those areas and still be very healthy and strong as a school budget. As we get down into supply budgets, you will see that there are cuts in district-wide elementary, junior high, high school, textbooks, minor new equipment, um, stay the same, computer software, computer hardware, all of those areas. And us down to educational media services. Educational media services is basically the library. Um, we've made some cuts in that area and that has to deal with the expenditures of what they've been spending for the last few years and seeing exactly what we can live with or live without. And so you'll see that there has been cutbacks in some of the supply areas. You will see under professional educational salary there's a significant increase that has to deal with the addition of one full-time librarian salary added to the school. So you will see that that the overall budget from last year for library media has increased Health insurance went up in there. Well, it, it went up in there because when you add that third person, they have health insurance. They're, that's part of their contract. We go down to board services, trustee services. As you work down through there, you will see advertising. We increased the budget by a thousand. Dues and fees we increased by two thousand. We noticed in the actuals as we were looking down through there that um, we've been spending more money um, to advertise jobs and whatnot. So that's a, an area of the budget that we felt like uh, has been overspent the last couple of years, and we need to put more money into it to balance that. Um, we also felt like on the dues and fees. We have been um, out of balance in that, and there's increases there to cover um, the dues and fees cost. And that's dues and fees like belonging to the Montana School Boards Association or the National School Boards Associations. Is this where all our legal services go into that category, 353? Yes, we budget 6000 for legal services. That includes every, all attorneys like our Televa and all that, that's budgeted. Yeah, that that's, that's what we when we get billed by her, that is where we pull the money out of. If she's working directly for us on the board, she may sometimes be working for the insurance company. Yeah, she represents us. In, uh, for example, um, like with Title IX, the insurance company, that falls under our insurance. And so 
Um, she represents the school district and is paid by the insurance carrier in that in that instance. Under Title Nine, any Title Nine case, she's paid for under our insurance program. If the insurance carrier deems it a risk to the school district that it needs to uh, indemnify the school district. into the superintendent's office and you'll see um, there were there's really very little change to that area. We get down to the office of principal services and you'll see that there is a um, a cut in the administrator. The previous year we left Mrs. Hollis full salary in that. This year we just segregated it out and made sure that half of her salary came out of construction. So we placed it up in half of her salary up into 1,112 with the teachers and ended up half of her salary in the administrative like it is defined in her contract. And who's that for? I'm sorry. Mrs. This is Hulla. Oh, okay. Sorry. Never met. A, a result of our decreasing from three principals to two and a half. Right. Question as far as salaries go, how do we, uh, um, these are base salaries, how do you, how do you project uh, their like additional, for example, say uh, if you're all our base salaries in here, what about their extracurricular activities that they like, for instance, like uh, AD or anything like that, where's that? There's a little column, there's yeah, all that, the categories for that as we go. Yeah, as we go down, we'll get, we'll okay. get to those areas. Yeah. I'll, I'll make sure to point out how some of that works, okay? And then the detailed budget, you will see it's defined within the detailed budget for you. So then we go support services business. Um, you know, it's relatively unchanged. Um, when you get down to printing service, um, pretty much the same thing. Now we did take the 500 out of supplies there, but we haven't used that supply money in a couple of years. Um, actually, in quite a few years, so we feel like, you know, when it comes to printing services, we don't feel like there's a lot of supplies that we need to use there. I think that what's happening is um, the, when they do supplies, they're pulling it out of district-wide instead of that area, and that's fine. It just demonstrates that we don't have to put money into that spot in our uh, budget. Plant operation and maintenance uh, budget, you'll see that uh, we have administrative, Dennis Burns, custodial maintenance, custodian contracts. Um, you know, as it all works now, as we move down through this, you'll see changes in monies to uh, the gas, uh, well, contracted services, and then gas and electric. And that might be one that you might want to pull into your detailed budget and take a look at. It, it'll uh, kind of show you a little bit of how we try to deal with these issues. So that's 21, 160, 2600. That would be a question. I was going to say, and some of that's a result of the improved equipment that we've been putting in for several years now, right? Mm -hmm. Like what, for instance, what, what do you mean? Um, we controls on the boiler system and stuff. Um, we made some upgrades on our control system in the boiler for uh, cost savings. Uh, you know, we're, we're able to operate more efficiently. Anything else? Well, we changed out the lighting. We put in, you know, that high that high efficiency lighting okay. in like the in the new gym. That was another thing we upgraded. So like when you get to uh, operation and maintenance, you get to contract services, you'll see that you've got event cleanup, refinishing the floors, boiler controls, and 
then we have some miscellaneous and some uh, new carpeting. And you will see as that breaks out, there was a decrease in those contracted services from the previous year. And some of that comes in reduced. I know the previous year we had 10,000 budgeted for new carpeting. This year, for this next year, we have budgeted 7,200. So there was some pullback in those areas. As you look at gas, we realize that we've been consistently operating in the high 40s to low 50s for the last few years on our gas. So we felt like we could very easily um, save about $10,000 and pull down to about $56,000 and still have a comfortable cushion. Um, we just believe that that $10,000 was going to end of the year money. Um, in electricity, we pulled it back by about $5,000. Um, and electricity is the other, you know, it's one that we've got to keep a close eye on. I, I think that uh, we'll probably, in short order within the next couple of years, add that money back into it. But I believe we still have a good cushion for any utility increases that we may see this next year or increase in usage. And remember, um, for example, one of our increased usage this past year was when the boiler system uh, went down in the lower elementary, one of the things that we had to do was we had to move all the lights on in the building 24-7 to produce some type of radiant heat to keep the building at uh, a livable temperature for the kids. It wasn't ideal, but it was something that we uh, did, and we also brought in a lot of space heaters, which were a heavy draw on the uh, electricity also. So. You know, you do need a little cushion in those light items in those types of cases or events could occur. And then taking a look down at minor new equipment, um, that was where another big hit to the budget occurred. Well, back up. Telephone, we increased telephone by 12000 because we noticed that um, we were severely under budget in that area and we need to increase the budget to address those issues that we saw with our, our bill, and that has to deal with our um, fiber lines and everything that come into the school for our people and some of the contracts we have on that. So we now feel like we're in balance on the phone. And that's why we've increased it. In terms of supplies, um, we left supplies alone. Um, you know, keeps the keeps the custodians with the cleaners they need to clean the building. But under minor equipment, new under line item 660, um, we did away with uh, some fencing and mealings for the parking lot. Those were things that we had budgeted in that we did away with, so that um, we're down to the fifty thousand method is back to where it was uh, not too long ago. Here it's just 56,000. Is that the change in the name for that? For that 50,000? 50, well, one of the things that we're looking at for that 50,000 is a match to a grant. Uh, we have the Safe Routes to School grant that we're doing for Long Avenue. And uh, one of the things that we the board approved was a match to that grant, and I believe it was like 47000 So we ended up getting the grant. The county kicks in CTEP dollars. We kick in some money for that. So that's where that money will come from in the future. But the other projects that we want to do, which was the fence and the parking lot buildings, we don't have to budget because we already got that. For the most part. Yeah. We, we do for this year. We're still under our actuals this year. We still have money for fencing and stuff, which we will use for some improvements around the school. Um, and then we will probably want to talk about some other improvements that we're going to need to do for safety around the school. And other things we'll have to um, have a discussion about also. And then moving down, the next big line is special education instruction. Um, you can see that under 
vacation leave, once again, we have not had the need to pay that out, so we cut back on that. Um, we'll also see that under workman's comp, we have had a big savings there. Um, the comp rate was mis uh, miscoded, so we have straightened that out. And then uh, you can see with uh, regard to uh, supplies and travel, we have cut back to where we feel the actuals actually match up with the expenditures and uh, of what we've had in the past with where we're at today. As we get down into the to these bottom areas um, of extracurriculars, we start getting into band, fire, and all the coaching. Um, this is an area of the budget that you're going to probably see some numbers change because I've talked to Mrs. Morgan about this. We need to we need to rake through the current contracts we have and where people are actually. Uh, sitting at and get those firmed up. They're not firm enough numbers at this point. So, um, you know, we're giving the best we can at this point, but I still think there's going to be some changes there. Uh, and so I don't want you to be surprised if you come back and see some changes from this point on with regard to some of the contract sightings that we have for those areas. And, John, that sort of has to do with the uh, longevity of people doing those positions. They yeah, they get a little bit more if they've been here a certain number of years. If it's somebody new, they get the lower rate, that kind of thing. It's so all, you have to work, work through that. It's all based off of the contract. Mm -hmm. It was a new contract last year, so it has new numbers, and they all went up. So between that and the longevity, all that comes into play. Mm -hmm. Yep. So we're working through it. So we have to see who says they're going to do stuff again. Mm -hmm. Right. So then that gets back to your question, uh, Colby, you, you'd asked about um, where some of these other salaries exist for people. Um, if we go on into uh, 201, salaries and it has 11,000. When you look at it you will see what's broken out here is that part of Dan Grabowski's contract is he has an additional 3,500 that he's paid to be in attendance at games. You have um, state bonus payments for I mean, uh, you know, teams achieve going to state. There are bonus payments under the contract that they are given. And then you have the athletic director's salary that is all built into that. So those are things that build up to that line items. Does that include lines. coaching and all that exports, all that? No, that the coaching, if we if we jump down, let's just go to the next area, which is okay, girls' yeah, basketball. Yeah, sorry, I got it here. Okay. Okay. Then we try to break it out for, you know, like each sport, like under girls' basketball, you have the head coach and assistant coaches and other uh, professional salaries and you know their travel and their supplies and stuff and so you can see how these things break down yeah, in those areas. And the travel is what we put in to the um, from the from the general fund. Um, this is we're budgeting from the general fund these items here that doesn't take into account what the kids have fundraised. Yeah, the fundraised money is not included in this. Mm -hmm. This is just general fund dollars. So this is to the extent that we're supporting our, our you know, supporting the kids, so. so. This gives you a basic rundown. Guard. So when they punch in on the time clock, uh, 
uh, we've accounted for X number of hours that they are going to be there. Um, we also have, like under special education aids, we have a responsibility to have a bus monitor on the special ed bus so that a has an extended contract to come earlier to get on the bus that runs the route and picks the kids up and then stays later and gets on the bus and makes sure the kids get home and then they get dropped off back here at the school and they, uh, you know, punch out at that time. Across the yards. Some of them were paying thirty-nine dollars an hour, so they were getting about thirty minutes a day, thirty minutes a day of their shift, so about nine dollars a day. Each across the board, and that's just that's just rough off the top of my head. That's not exactly. Probably safety money well spent. About the traffic, I think it's more about the cars and the There's so many vehicles on both sides, it's a little bit dark now. And uh, I think if there's some of the collecting the across the, at the crosswalks, it, it helps a lot. The older ones seem to do great. My third grader. Crossing, and I, got, I know you guys are encouraging them to drop off up here. At least that's why I'm going to do something up along the avenue because that's a fairly scary proposition um, with the way the parking and people stop in the middle of the street and people pull off by the fence and get the car doors are opening and we're going to try to control that a little bit. That was the first thing I was really amazed at the first. Day I dropped my sec at that time second grader off. I'm like, what? People going in which direction? But then I was used to in Virginia, we we had to line up and then one car at a time, one car at a time, one car at a time. And everybody was going the same way and nobody was going in the opposite direction. But they were in a cul-de-sac, so they could manage that. That that's, that's in this budget. So, yeah, so if, we, if you take a look at this budget sheet here, the OPI budget sheet, it talks about where the budget numbers come from. And so, and Jeannie helped me on this just to make sure I don't want to get the wrong. If we talk about fiscal year 2014 budget limits, the highest voted amount is the amount that's already been approved and voted upon by the taxpayers. That, it, that includes all those levies, that 532000 at the very bottom. Those okay. are over all, all the years of funding. Okay, so it's, under item 10, okay. you'll have to excuse me, I don't work with this as much as the more than this. Under item 10, prior year information for budgeting, we have the highest over base authorized between 2008, 9, and 12, 13, and so, I'm sorry, adopted the general fund budget. That fee is $532,000. And that, I believe, that added to your base budget was in the 9B. That should be your $5,298,000, I believe, for that works. Mm -hmm. Whatever the budget. So the 130000 is in the factory? Yes, it is. Yes. Correct. So that's ongoing. Yes, it's an ongoing one. Okay. Yes, it's an ongoing one. If we compared that over the years, we went back to the old sheets. So before that was voted in, that number was actually more, this, this highest base uh, over levy was actually more because we were still 10 on the building bond. 
but we've now paid off the building bonds, then that went down, and then we put the 130000 was voted on. So we're still at less than we were a few years back because that building bond is paid off now. So, we have competing needs in the district. For example, school resource officer. And it's budgeted in. You know, we placed it into this budget so that if the board wants to approve that, then it most certainly could. So, what I would ask committee members to do is as you take this information home with you, um, take a look at it find questions you have, um, come back and ask the questions at our next meeting. If you if you have a burning question that you want to ask, you can call myself and Mrs. Morgan and we'd be happy to go through how this was constructed to give you as much information as possible. Um, because we've got, one of the things I'd like to see um, this committee be able to do is give a little bit of direction to the board in terms of, you know, as we move towards trying to fill positions. Um, you know, we've looked at from the standpoint of expenditures on supply budgets, and although the supply budgets have been cut back a little bit, um, we still feel, feel very comfortable with how the expenditure actuals have turned out this year so far. Um, and so we'll make sure that we have that at our next meeting and see what we can do in terms of enlightening that. On, uh, on the note, we'll take these home and review them. I kind of, I, you guys ask a lot of questions, so I just kind of let that out. But um, is there any, rather than call, can I email you both in the form of put them in a bulk and then, heck, I could be calling you 10 times a day. That doesn't really make sense. Can I email all my questions? I understand you guys have your business and all this, but well, one of the I'll things, bulk them and then it, it, it's simpler. I can check them at night. And yeah, one of the things I want you to, to feel comfortable with, Colby, is we work. You're an elected official. You have questions. We're going to answer your questions. We're going to try and get to it as quick as we can within the ordinary business day that we can to to get the answers for your questions. We want you to know and understand and feel comfortable with um, some of the things you're going to have to do as a trustee. Okay. So we want you to have the information uh, necessary to make informed decisions. But I think the answer to his question is if you email them to Jeannie, then she and John can collaborate on what, that's probably the most logical thing. That's my question. Yeah. And I can Instead have, because in yeah. order for me to be prepared for the next meeting, it helps me if I have answers to those questions prior. And, and, then I, and I'm still new. new. I've only been here a year. So I'm okay. still kind of in the process as well. So I'm not like, I can just jump right on and Yeah, and I understand all, things, and so that's I'll, 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 I'll yeah. limit them as much as I can okay. and I'll make them as, as that. But I, you know, in order for me to go through and have, you know, I'm new, I'm going to have a lot of questions. There's going to be a lot of care. Yeah, this is not, I'm, I'm big on budgets. I yeah. run my own company. I'm very familiar with budgets. I've done it for a long time, so I'm not new to a budget, mm -hmm. uh, but I, I'm new to this stuff, right? Yeah. Yeah. You know, when I'm a guy with numbers, I'm used to seeing actuals and stuff, so I'm going to be it's that fine. guy. Absolutely. I'm not trying to cause problems. No, no, no. It's good communication. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So you know where I'm coming from, but I'm not... Right, and, and, and correct either, me so. if I'm not, you know, if I'm getting pushy or attacking right. yeah. yeah. okay. you. But that would be the logical case. thing. If you tell her what you want, and she and John say, okay, here's what we should do. And yeah, that, my point is I'm an email guy. I don't yeah. know if I, I, I love email. No, I want for email. five years. I don't even know how to use a fax. I think email's great. Okay, yeah. so we're good that way. Okay. Yeah. Sounds perfect. But just just so you're aware, I mean, actual, the actual... Um, preliminary budget sheet was created out of Black Mountain and generated some numbers. There were some numbers that weren't good in there. And what I mean is, I can tell just right off the top of my head, they didn't look right. And that was their transfer? Mm -hmm. they transfer yeah, numbers. and so, you know, I immediately walked into Mrs. Morgan's office and said, what's going on here? Why is this? 
and I believe part of it is because you're using one software, Black Mountain different software, when they did that transition a few years ago, I have to think that it has to do with the coding and how that's applied in Black Mountain, but I'll be communicating more with Black Mountain because I think that's where the shift is, how these were coding in Black Mountain. Because payroll set in a certain way, so when I run payroll, those accounts are already set up. So when I run somebody, you know, custodian for instance, it's already got a set set of general ledger accounts. I don't go ahead and change those. But possibly there was some changes in the time frame from Spotsy Lady to Black Mountain. But nothing and so what it essentially spins into is I ask the question, she looks and investigates a little bit. She's going to need to go back to talk to the people up at the Black Mountain about how when they came in and they took over the budget and started entering stuff into their software, and they switched over, how did they go about doing certain things? And the problem that we went into is if Mrs. Mason was still here, she could answer those questions probably off the top of her head because she was intimately involved with all of that. Transfer. Mm -hmm. Black Mountain, how long have we been transferred? How long have we had Black Mountain? I think 2010. Or 10. So it's relatively new? Yeah. Yes. It's great. It's a great software. It's just um, a few little items like this, which I have to think has to do with the coatings. And that's why I see in different places. Well, and the other thing is that if the person doing the key and just made one wrong number, that puts you in the different count. Well, it's probably mapped a lot of it, so that it was automatic. It's automatic. That's what I'm yeah. trying to say. It's yeah. so. mapped automatic. So mm -hmm. when I run payroll, they say those codes are reset. They don't change anything. Yeah. But if there was miscommunication between the Fox Bay program and the Black Mountain, as to how things were set up, mm -hmm. as he said, the mapping. Then mm -hmm. that kind of well, I hope we can, can get. Um, I hope we can get all that issue. Because I'll be honest, I'm gonna have to make. I'm gonna have a hard time making decisions without actual. And there's not that many. Well, we're gonna get some actuals, and okay. And we've got different ways to produce it, which you know, we're going. You know, I'm talking to Mrs. Morgan about us getting that stuff for you. Okay. Um, you know, it's, it's just gonna take us a little bit of time because I don't want to give you that. I want to make sure you put good actual numbers so that you can sit down and look at it and not be wasting your time. Doesn't our fiscal year end in June, the end of June, the end of June yes, that is for July 1, we have to have the actual okay. So, I mean, time's kind of a essence, really. I mean, yeah, we're going to do it well before then for you. Yeah. You'll, you'll get it well before then because the other thing is that we have our budget hearings. This preliminary budget stuff, we'll be working up with it up until the middle, middle of July. And then what you have is a final budget hearing that comes out the first part of August. And that final budget hearing is the adoption of the budget where the board actually um, does its formal procedures to say, here's the budget we're going to adopt that's going to run the fiscal year. So this committee comes to the comes to the board and says, here's what we here's what we found, here's what we think we should do. Yeah, and so it, they make a recommendation to the whole board from this committee. So, all right, thank you. Um, what category did we put the SRO in? I just want to star that for myself here. And we were building that one in so that we know. And the other thing, with being able to say yes, we want an SRO, whether we're Valley County will have somebody to. To, uh, send us to under 1350, the very first page, the contract services. Okay, all right, so under your detailed budget. All right, there we go. All right, there we go. That, that would make sense. How much, uh, that is, what's their SRO cost, what's your what's the salary Well, what they do is they, the Valley County Sheriff's Department um, bills us for that position. Um, what it is, they say about a half-time position, but really the half-time position is more closer to thirty-five to $40,000. So they're going to tell you that, you know, even though they call it that, it's really not that. We've had anywhere from 20 to 22,000 quoted to us. Um, we have 
put a little bit of cushion in the event that they come back and negotiate a little bit more with us on what they think the actual cost is going to be to start the program up in Florence again. And that's not a for sure thing because I haven't had the board as a whole embrace the SRO program yet, you know, and say this needs to happen. So we're still at a very preliminary stage with the Sheriff's Department on the discussions involving this program. The last time we had one was 2010. Correct. We had 20,000 formed in. Well, what ended up happening back then was um, they were when we ended up eliminating the position we had to deal with costs, uh, the program was costing around $12,000 and the Sheriff's Department said it could no longer sustain allowing us to have an SRO program for that cost. They came back with, um, I believe it was $19,000 cost for the program to sustain it as it had existed. Uh, it showed us some numbers in terms of why they needed to do that. Um, you know, when they have a full-time officer working in their department, I believe their costs are closer to $70,000 um, for that. And they were saying they, they need to increase it because of their budget issues that they have on their end. Um, and then we had our own budget constraints and issues that we were dealing with back then. Um, you know, pulling back on some programs at the school and this program got tied up into the entire flux of it was going to cost more and we were already cutting back programs in other areas. So there was just a whole discussion as to uh, the viability of that program for the school. But I think, um, you know, it is a program worth revisiting. And we have talked at various meetings that Several of us feel real strongly that it's important. Do we just have to talk about it again? Yes. So. So I guess overall, your <coughs> feeling is that uh, the money available in the proposed budget pretty much matches, so there's no major. There's a concern like there was a few years ago when we had to go through it. Correct. Mm -hmm. we're, we're, this budget, we're sitting in a good spot with this budget. It isn't, this isn't a bad situation that the school district has. We can sustain programs for kids. We're actually able to possibly serve the needs. When we talk about our situation in the fourth grade this year, we have only two teachers in that grade level. Those kids will be moving up to fifth grade next year. And we just have a dynamic in that class grade level that has created issues that we need to address. And a lot of parents have come in and have requested that we consider making three positions for fifth grade this next year, even though there was only two positions in fourth grade this year. And it has to do with some of the, the issues that this group of kids brings with them into the school building. Every group of students, every grade level of students, have different personalities, different ways that they approach um, life and approach education. And you know, those parents have made a pretty strong plea for the school district to take a serious look at um, adding additional resources into that environment. Um, now, with that being said, they would ideally like to see an additional teacher hired on. But we could turn around and we could save money if we wanted to instead put some instructional aids in those environments. You know, hire a couple of instructional aids, put them in there. Um, the exchange though, that you start getting into when you make that type of a decision is if you create smaller class sizes with a person who's a teacher, and you have three teachers that are working with smaller class sizes, you're probably going to see a better bang for the educational value for those kids where they're getting some pretty intensive um, instruction and they have better achievement versus when you put two aids in there and save some dollars, what are the cost savings versus the gains that you could have seen if you would have had three teachers because two aids are going to cost you well over 20000 and a new 
new teacher, we're budgeting in it uh, right around thirty-two to thirty-three thousand. So you had to ask yourself, okay, where is the value? How do you value this house? As, as well as which which um, option actually addresses the parent parent concerns. But I mean, I'm, I'm really glad to hear you say that you look at each class as the, the kids that they are, what they bring to your building, as opposed to, you know, we're going to make that decision strictly on PTR. I mean, I think that's the responsible way to do it, is to look at the impact a group of children can have on your building and address it that way. And we've noticed that in the past. We've had groups of kids that go through that have very similar um, situations to this group. And we've seen how they have grown up in our system and how they've had problems within our system. And if we can somehow provide them with some additional support earlier on, um, we might be able to avoid or head off uh, some of the issues that they may have. So that is just one way that Well, and I think the dynamics of this group has changed a good bit since we, at the end of their second grade year, said, boy, we think we can do it with two teachers. I think the dynamics has changed in this group mm -hmm. to the extent that we, we can't be there anymore. Well, so we are pushing the numbers of, of successful, allowable OPI at where we are now with just two teachers. And so we need to, we need to step up. But the overall enrollment stabilized or is it still going down? It's stabilized. It's, you know, we have to put all the time over there. You know, we're 237, I mean, 837, 815, 826. You know, I would, I would suspect we'll probably be around 830, 820 to 840 range at the beginning of this next school year. I'm not seeing, you know, we're not seeing a lot of kids leaving right now, and we're not seeing a lot of new kids come in. Um, kindergarten. So kindergarten enrollment, look. We're up a little bit from where we were at this point last year. Are we going to be covered there? Are we going to have enough with what we've got lined up? I think so, yeah, because we'll continue with our T1 kindergarten combo. Okay. Because that's often an indicator, it's kindergarten. Where are we going? Is there anything pending with the negotiation with teachers on the contracts other than what John mentioned, the increases because of the debt to and stuff? Um, the, the teacher's, teacher's contract, contract has already done. been approved and ratified. So that's all factored into yeah. this. Classified contract is not. And classified is an employee that does um, <coughs> playgrounds, special ed, secretarial, um, custodial, those types of uh, jobs within the school. Their contract is up for negotiations this year, so they could issue me a letter at any time that says they want to open up negotiations. I'm going to do it on behalf to sit at the table and uh, deal with them in good faith. So, if it happens, then it's not going to be a major benefit. I hope not. I mean, we factored in some additional costs for them already. Um, I would, I wouldn't want them to know what that number is yet because they don't know exactly what the starting point is. But um, you know, I know that we're probably gonna have to deal with them on some level. So it's back to in there. If if it came back that we didn't negotiate a contract and just pull that money back out of the budget, slide it into the supply dollars if that's what we choose to do. Um, but their two year contract comes to an end this year. And, and so, June thirtieth. Um, they either have to renew or roll, right? Sure. So either they're going to negotiate something new or they're going to say, okay, we'll stay with what we have and roll. They could do that for a one-year period, right? Mm -hmm. If they choose to. So. And we've been lucky here in the last few years that the, the units have been willing to come and we've been able to negotiate in good faith without having to hire a negotiator, which is why we've been able to leave out the negotiation fees, you know, for hiring somebody. If you're able to have good comradeship and 
and uh, everybody's been able to come to the table and and negotiate in good faith. And so, if we had to if we had to hire a negotiator, what are we looking at? A minimum of four or five grand just to get them in the door. Yeah. So it's uh, you know appreciated that we'd rather give them that, but give them as much as we can without having to hire somebody for arguing. How are you ladies feeling over here? Yeah, I, I think, you know, having just had a chance to look at the budget, that it seems like it's, it's balanced, and that's a good thing. Yeah, that's a good thing. And, and I don't know that the all this legislative movement that happened this year was, it, it definitely wasn't a detriment to us, let's put it that way. It wasn't, if whatever little tiny bit we got, it wasn't a, a lot of money, but at least we weren't stepping backwards. So that's a good thing. Anybody else? So do we um, do John? Do we want to go ahead and try to to look at our calendars for another meeting here, since we got everybody in the room at once here? Well, just so you guys are aware, um, we do have a special board meeting for Thursday. We have the regular school board meeting for the 11th. Um, And the 10th is middle school graduation. We'll wrap up applications okay. here, review here. We'll probably be interviewing in here. So we're going to probably end up having to do some kind of special board meeting later this week or early this week. Uh, the week of the 17th. So we're probably looking right in here. So I would say if we could shoot for like the 12th, for a budget and finance meeting. I'm also going to arrange my schedule because I have an artist coming the third the whole week. Yeah. And I got double, triple payrolls the week of 11th plus the morning because I don't know if it's going to give me time to really delve into these questions that you have. Mm -hmm. I'll try, but I, my, this, I think it's escalating right now. I know. It's a very, very tight month of June. So but I can why? delve into it, but I don't know if I'll have all the answers to see communicating with Black Mountain comparing to Foxy Lady and finding out the payroll questions that we're talking about. I'm going to, I'm going to be going for the three weeks to June to the top town. So, be so, the 24th. <clears throat> Let's talk about this. Just so the communities at least have a little bit of discussion. In looking at the budget as it stands right now, from I know that you've not had an opportunity to really study it. So this might be an unfair question. But as we move forward with, you know, I, I'm going to have to interview and get a recommendation for hire out. I would say no later than the 14th of the month. You know, that, that's pushing it out there. Mm -hmm. um, we could push that to the 21st if, if we wanted to. But if by doing so, what ends up happening in your application pool is you have some good candidates who might take jobs elsewhere. And so one of the big questions that stands out there right now is, okay, you can see where the cuts have been made in this budget in order to build in the SRO position and in order to build in the additional teaching position that we're talking about. And that's basically right in those supply dollars for a district-wide middle school, elementary, high school. Could we feel comfortable with moving forward on hiring an additional teacher at one of those grade levels and 
leave those supply dollars as they stand, or we need to hold off and, and hold the hiring process up a little bit so that they're being afforded an opportunity to better study this so that it's a better decision and a recommendation to go before the board. Because once we do the interviews, we're going to have to have a meeting for the board to actually take a motion to hire. Well, my two cents on it is to move forward with hiring that position. If you look at the budget, we were able to add 10000 to each of the supply budgets for this year, and I was really grateful. But having only had it for one year and then having it cut, I, I can live with that. That means hiring an additional teacher. I was going to say, I hate for us to miss out on the best of the applicant pool. Um, we know we have to have some sort of help for these for the fifth grade. And then do we have to have, we're going to have who's going to, retire, to replace a retiring teacher? Well, the retiring teacher has to be. That has to be done that anyway. Be done. So then the question is, we're, are we going to be recommending this to the board? Um, and then we can hold off on the second position until later in June and fill the, the first position right away. You know, get that person interviewed and hired and put before the board as soon as we possibly can. We're going to have to have a special board meeting later in June down here for closing out the budget. Well, we have our week, our work meeting too. So yeah, which is meeting. yeah. So this is a you're talking about a one position fifth grade position. Is that what you're saying? Do we have how many do you have in mind to the how many applicants? There? We have about seventy applicants right now. And you got it narrowed down. Is there we some you got your eye on? We closed here? it yet. They're still coming in. We still have applications. You feel we need to have that have that position. There's 70 applicants, yeah. and we're worried about getting the best of the 70. Is that what you're telling? We try to hire the best we can, and what ends up happening is when you screen out those 70 applicants, there's usually about five or six gems, ones that are really good. And when you start chasing that that person. Um, Usually you'll find that a lot of the districts that are trying to fill their positions in the area have these people on the top of their list also. And we've been in situations where we've hired somebody and I've gotten a call from a fellow superintendent saying, oh man, why'd you take that person for? We were really interested in them, right? But we've also been in the situation where we've been very interested in somebody and we went to take them and they already accepted our position elsewhere. And you need to have this decision by what date, did you say? Well, the, the soonest that I can see us doing this is about the 14th of June, you know, having a recommendation to the board for hire. Um, because, number one, we have to screen all those applications, and then we're going to have to set up interviews, and then after we do the interviews, you know, this point might be new. Martin, if you're gone the first three weeks, you won't be here the week of the 17th. Jeannie wouldn't be here the week of the 17th. What about the 24th? Can we do a meeting on the 24th as a budget finance? We'll try to do a board meeting the 26th because we're going to have to have our work board meeting the 25th, 26th, or 27th anyway for the board. Then we get out a budget and finance committee before that and get a recommendation coming out of here for the trustees for their work session. What will the board meeting in 26 be? A schedule, what meeting will that be? Well, what it does, what what that board meeting is, uh, Colby, is that um, the trustees come in and we um, usually try to close out our budget for the fiscal year. When we go through and we take a look at the facilities, well, we just walk, walk around inspection and then we finalize some of our end of the year um, projects that we have. Um, you know, we take a look at the, the needs of the facility and needs of programs and make decisions on how to spend out that end of the year monies. Um, one of the things that we're faced with this year is every year since I've been here, we've been trying to put money in our reserves and we've been very successful in sticking money in our reserves each year. Well, this year we're gonna do a budget amendment. We're gonna be pulling 
Um, probably on Thursday's federal board meeting, we're going to be pulling um, easily six digits out of our reserves to cover the cost of a new septic system for the school district because our drain field is um, not doing what it should do. And uh, so. That's a nice way for saying it's kaput. Where, where do we speak in reserves? Where is this? Where do we know? Where's our reserve? Is that in here? Where, where do we know where that is? That comes up in the final budget hearing. The, be the a, school that'll district. Be a, you'll tell me in the final budget and well, hearing. Well, no, I, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you as soon as I'm able to get the information in the office, we can give that to you. you call that the reserve fund? Mm -hmm. Budget reserves. And so, on budget reserves, a school district's not allowed to have more than 10% of its general fund. So, in our general fund budget here, that's uh, five point what is it, five point three million, approximately. You cannot exceed ten percent of that for your okay. reserve. So our next, this was a preliminary budget overview. So you're saying we could have one on the twenty fourth. What's the what's that one going to be called? What are we preliminary budget review? Again. Same thing. And yeah. then you're talking that. And the, we'll the two days right later, if everything can go, you, you bring a book and we have a board meeting to pass the entire budget. So no, no, just to make a recommendation to the board. Make a recommendation. Okay. Well, I mean, I'm fine with meeting on the 24th. I mean, I, I, as a new guy, I don't really feel great on making a decision on, like you're asking me to without, I got a lot of stuff to look at here, so no, yeah. I, don't, I don't feel comfortable, but that's just me. Well, that's why I said I think of it as uh, somewhat unfair question to ask, you know, and that's why I coached it that way when we started this. So, because I don't want, I don't want to be rushing people into decision making either. Okay. Just to make sure you understand what it comes down to is how you need.